All righty, let's get after this. You know, I was, um, I've been talking about no competition being allowed and about the things that take the Lord's place. And so I thought today that if I start talking about how technology and a lot of our modern things that we use has, we spend too much time messing around with tech, I thought, for, I said to myself, that would be a pretty nice short time. But then you know how God works. He's in charge. So it starts to get bigger and it starts to get bigger and it starts to get bigger because technology is not just the tech that we, we think of tech today. We think of tech from a standpoint of what? Cell phones, computers, stuff like that. But when you start looking at the technological advances that's been going on in history, you can see behind a whole lot of those things, there was a whole lot of ego. And when you have a lot of ego, you have a lot of wrong motive. And where there's wrong motive, there's idolatry. And when there's idolatry, there's an absence of God. So I thought about this one. Remember, there's a real big boat built a long time ago called the Titanic. You know, you go to Branson, there's this nice little, this nice little, um, I guess you can call it entertainment deal. You can go in there and learn about the Titanic. But you know, one thing that the guy said, Edward John Smith said this. He said, even God couldn't sink this ship. <laughs> he, that's what he said. Even God couldn't sink this ship. I think he was wrong. Because whenever, whenever man starts to put something or something that he's created above the creator, you have a problem. And so we live in a society in which we're, people are always looking for something to take the place of God. And, and even today, we're looking for someone or some organization that can do only what God can do. Because there's nothing but the sanctifying grace of the Holy Spirit can remove the sinful lust of the human will and the depravity of the human heart. Only God can fix it. We're looking for somebody to, 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 to swoop down and change everything. The instant That person does not exist because he already sent his only begotten son to try to take, to take care of that. Amen. He paid the price for it. But now we need to make sure that we speak his truths to bring as many people into the kingdom of God. Amen? So, when technology is disconnected from God, I never thought, when we start talking about big tech now, I never thought this situation would ever exist. To where you have Facebook, what, Facebook, Twitter, Google, all these different places. Being acting like God, telling everybody what's true, telling people what's false. Amen. There's only one truth. That's the word of God. And so now when you have this happening, all of this stuff is going to be judged by God. Now, let me have Genesis 1 verse 26. Because God, God had given us a responsibility to rule and to walk in authority and live in it. Amen? So now, don't get me wrong when I start talking about technology because technology is nece necessary because we were created in the image and the likeness of God. We were created by a creator that we have his creativity inside us. And so wherever there's creativity and we're, we can pursue it freely, there's going to be creative power that says, hey, we can, we can move that faster. Hey, I can fly. Hey, we can go to the moon. Hey, we can do this. Amen? All this, oh, there's greatness all on the inside of us, but we got to understand this, that along with that creative power, it has to be submitted 
to the authority of God. Because when the creative power is separated from God and is used by Satan, now you got a problem. Amen? You guys, you guys with me? So God gave us. He said, let us make human beings in our image and be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the herbs of the sky, the livestock, all wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry, that, that scurry under the ground. So God created us into a position of authority, but inside part of that was that we were going to, as we progressed as human beings and grown in our society, we identified that something's needed, and we develop those skills and cultivate those skills under the grace of God to bring about positive change. Amen? It's like this. We all know, we all believe that God can heal us all, amen? But because of love, the love of God, we have medicine. You have surgery done with robots. Anybody know someone who has surgery for robotic? Amen. If, you, if you're going to have surgery with human hands or robotic hands, which one would you rather have? Okay? So those are innovations that when they, are cre when they are created and linked up with God, they can help people, amen? We wish everybody could receive healing instantly like this, but some people go to doctors. Some people have surgeries, amen? Okay, now, let's keep going here. When we start talking about technology, and this is another, this is another piece, that when technology is linked up with God, awesome things can happen. Don't you think God had a technology meeting with Noah? Huh? Remember, remember now that, see, I, I know somebody's like, technology, what's going on? Think about the conversation God had with him. Okay, I'm building what? How big? God, how am I going to make sure I have enough places to feed all these animals Etc. 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 So God has a plan. They had a they had a tech meeting. If you do this, if you cut this, if you do that, this will work. Amen. See, we always think about technology in our own in our in our generation. But again, there have been technological advances in the way back. But like I stated, when technology is linked with God and it's submitted under the authority of God, tremendous things will happen. But what we have today is in our society today, technology has become an idol to people because it is it's in the place of God. We'll get there. We're getting there. So there's nothing wrong with creativity. There's nothing wrong with us moving, moving forward. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that because technology makes our lives easier and convenient so we can do more things for the kingdom of God. Now, when I grew up, my mama, I'm the youngest of six, my mother did laundry with this. See, a lot of young folks today, maybe some of y'all out there don't understand what it's like to do laundry with that. When once you had the wash tub and then all of a sudden you had to crank it through that thing to squeeze it out and you went to a line and you hung it up. Amen? So again, technology is good. But technology used in the wrong way can be a weapon that can take the place of God in some people's lives. Amen. I, I remember that, man. She was she, she cranking that thing through, sending them. Mercy. That's a long time ago. Yeah, you ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. And they, you, cause you, man, you don't have, there's no electronic board to tell you. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, when you start looking at technological advances, a lot of those things have happened 
here in the good old United States of America, where, there's, where there is a nation founded upon freedom, I'm not saying it was perfect. When there's a nation that's founded upon freedom, there is freedom for technological development. Because where, there's, where, there's, where there is oppression, people don't, don't feel they can want to try anything. Because when you start thinking about this, the car was invented when the mode of transportation was this. And while that was going on, somebody said, we can fly. Is that amazing or what? Because, but I believe that when those things come in, those people, they had a, they had a vision of what was necessary to be able to move our society forward. Amen? Now, it's very important that we understand the role of technology is important because it's necessary to preach the gospel to the world. But if technology is perverted, it can show pornography across the world too. Amen? So you understand there's two sides. There's two sides to all this. And when people allow it to be manipulated, then it can take God out of, out of their lines. Now, technology is legitimate when it's attached to God. But when it becomes disconnected from God, it becomes an idol, and, it be, and, it be, and, it's, and it, God has, is envious towards that. When we spend a whole lot of our time, the first thing we do is get up in the morning. You can watch TV on this thing. You can watch your favorite sports games on this thing. You can pay your bills with this. I still write checks. A lot of people's lives are tied all into this. And before you know it, this right here can run your life. We'll keep on going. It's going to get good. When you'll see, this thing even hears you talking. Doesn't it? You ever been someplace or you've been on vacation and say, oh, well, I really love this area. I wonder if they got any houses for sale. The next thing you know, you start scrolling. Hey, there's a house for sale here. All right. Let's keep going. Technology is designed to be a tool that serves, not a master. And before you know it, you become addicted to this, and it takes the place of God in your life. If you spend more time scrolling on Facebook than you do in your Bible, huh? Huh? If you spend more time on, on social media, if you spend more time looking at whatever it is that you do in this than God, this is taking the place of God in your life. Because you know what? What you love the most, you spend the most time with. Amen? And if tech becomes your master, you have too many bosses in the house. Just think about it. Technology will tell you what to do. Oh, B, it's this day. I have to do this on this day. You guys don't realize you have so many timers and so many calendars put that remind you to do everything that you don't do anything on your, for yourself. You don't even think for yourself anymore. Amen? And you don't understand that, that these things are grabbing more and more and more of us each time. They remind us what to do all the time. The phone gets you to the point that you don't want to put it down. How many of you, if you left the house and you left the phone, you will park the car, turn right back around, and go get it? I, I, even if it's 45 minutes. Wait a second. Hold on a second here. Got to have my phone. Got to have my phone. You will say, stop the presses. You go, out to the, you go out to the car, 
And if you left your phone in the restaurant, you, you're, you're panicked. Where's my phone? Matter, matter of fact, on my phone, because I'm no different than you guys. See, we're on this thing all together. I have something called Find My iPhone and Find My iPad. I have all of this. Okay? So we're all this thing all together. Because remember, God wants us to be better and just to check ourselves on some of this stuff. If, again, if you can spend more time on LinkedIn, long more time on Twitter, more time on Facebook, more time on, on, on whatever social media or whatever this phone is having you do, more than you spending with God, this thing has taken over the place of God. Now, The phone says, the phone has got us to the point where it says, don't put me down. I always have to be with me. If, if you ever want to worry about, don't worry about nobody finding you. This thing's never far away. Boy, I'm on the run. Well, you know what? You better make sure you don't have a phone. Because <laughs> they'll find you. The TV will tell you, don't turn me off. Because you know Why? Because the TV knows what you want to see because you keep on telling it. And it consistently does the same thing to where you are glued to the program. See, I am not an Alexa guy. Alexa, turn on this. Alexa, unlock my door. Alexa, do this. Alexa, do that. Because I guess I'm one of them kind of guys that think that if someone else get my Alexa, I'm in a trouble up. You know, start my car, unlock my door. Um, they haven't got the one now. You can tell, run water in the sink. And people think this stuff's cute. You know what I'm saying? Where the dog throw the dog dish in the bowl. Hey, eight ounces for a roughy, and it runs. When we start getting to the point to where technology starts to override some of the things that we do, check yourself. We have to look at this, because technology was not supposed to separate us from, from, God, from God. Amen? But what you're, we're starting to find out now is, is that our creativity, that we are, creative, we are creative beings, but what we create is not supposed to take away all of our time. It's not supposed to take away the time that we're supposed to have with the Father. And this is addicting. And people say, well, it's not. Oh, yeah, right. Go, go on a, you can fast food as you can fast your cell phone. Oh, yeah. You can go on a seven-day fast for food easier than you can go on a seven-day fast without your cell phone. And like Brother Hagen would say, I double dog dare you to do it. To where you're not touching your, to where you don't have a cell phone. I'll tell you which way. Do it for three days. And you'll find out how many of your habits are surrounded around this. Now, if you have to carry one for your job, you got to carry one for your job. But when you're at home in your private time, and when you put this thing down, you'll be like this. <laughs> See, people used to talk. Husband and wife, children, cousins, aunties, grandma. We sit down, we used to talk. But now it's like this. You go to the restaurant, what do you see? Two people sitting across from each other. What are you laughing at? Oh, it's just something on the phone. Technology, what, we, what happens when people get together and we can and agree together and technological advances start to happen and they start to think they're better than God. They start to think that they can take place of God. And you can see this with all the people who run some of, our, some of the tech companies. They don't want nothing to do with spirituality. Amen. But they, but they want all the control. We're the ones. Look, I created this. 
I create a program that does blah, 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 blah. I'm Mr. Super Smart Guy. All right? But understand this. When people start worshiping their technology, instead of worshiping their creator, God's going to come down and going to fix all of it. You know why? Because he's actually done this before. We have Genesis 11, verse 1. Genesis 11, verse 1. Took me a while to get there, but let's go. Genesis 11, verse 1. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. Could you imagine that? If there's only one language? Wow. Then they began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and tar was used instead of mortar, because they couldn't get enough of the stone. Then they said, come, let us build a great city for who? Sound like Silicon Valley. When all these tech people come in, they all come in. They all dominate a, set, a certain area. You got Research Triangle Park in, um, in, in North Carolina. You got all these different, all these tech people come in all in the same areas. With a tower that reaches to the sky, this will make who? What? Famous. Don't you realize that some of the most popular and wealthiest and most powerful people in the world were, during my school years, would be the dorks, computer nerds. Huh? Come on, think about this. Now it's their time to shine. Everybody knows their, everybody knows their name. Everybody knows who Zuckerberg is. When he was growing up, he wasn't walking around high school like, hey, what's up, yeah, hey, what's up, man? Hey, got you, man, hey. They're like, oh, that's that computer dude. Now everybody knows his name. Who's those the Twitter guy's name? Is that Dorsey? So all these different guys, everybody, everybody knows their name, and they're building empires. They are building empires. And because they're building empires, they believe they can tell you what you can say and you what you're allowed to say and you what you're allowed to say and you what you're allowed to do and because we're addicted to it, what you can post. And they get away with it. Wow. Is that crazy or what? Now, this will make us famous, and look at the last part. It will keep us from being scattered all over the world. Now, were they supposed to be in the same place? See, this, it's, it's, not, it's never hard when you look at the Word of God and you find out that. Let me have, um, let me have um, Genesis 9, verse 1. These are, these are descendants of Noah. Okay? And they were given a specific objective. When God blessed Noah and his sons, he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. They're supposed to go out to the earth. They're supposed to spill out, not stay in the same place. But what happens to us when we get comfortable? And then when we get comfortable, we, get, we, 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 stay, we keep ourselves in the same environment, and we start to try to protect ourselves. And, and when you start looking at things that are tech, they love to protect themselves. And you start wondering, well, how come no one can get to it? How can they continue to get away with what they get away with?
things that make you say, hmm, let's keep going. Now, go back to um, um, Genesis 11, verse 2. And so when we start to look at what they were doing in trying to build this tower, they were trying to build a tower where they were not supposed to with the materials that were made by who? Huh? Who, who made the materials that they were using? No. God. God created, God created the heavens and the earth and all the materials. All the materials that, that we have in this earth were made by God for who? For, 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 by God, for God, and for us to be able to use them, right? But now, wouldn't it be, wouldn't you think that it would be a nice idea that if you started to build something that you wanted to build it for God? Who are they building this thing for? So you know it's already doomed right there. These are descendants of Noah. They have to know all the story. They have to understand all the instructions and everything that God said. But why do we keep on? Now, some places, some, some studies will say this was about 100 years after the ark had been at rest. That's really interesting if that's true. Didn't have time to do that. Had to work today. But when we start looking at these events and knowing how close this is and knowing what the instruction was, Noah half that sat down and told this story to his sons over and over and over and over again what you're supposed to do. So for moms and dads who think your kids are hard-headed, don't worry about it. This has been going on for a long time. Amen? And they're building that tower as if it's a it's going to be the center part of the city. Now, if you look at our tech today, it's designed to keep going out. There's sometimes, it, there's times that if I try to go live or, or do a video and put it immediately on Facebook, it doesn't get on. It doesn't make it. Don't know where it ends up. It ends up somewhere in a floating, in a floating universe. Somewhere. Don't know. Because there's sometimes, and, 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 and trust me, I'm not some controversial dude, man. I'm just a regular everyday preacher. But sometimes my stuff does not get on. And I know, if it, and I know that I'm not the only one in, to which this happens. Amen? Anybody ever had somebody try to post on Facebook didn't make it? Okay. And when you start looking at technology, when it's being taught in schools, they're trying to take God out of the equation and try to teach you, try to teach them that God did not have his hand in creation. So I was thinking about this. I said, you know what? Here at FTC, we need to, we need to get a trip together to the Ark Encounter. If we have to rent some buses and stuff like that, take everybody up there and Take some kids and some adults, go up there and see that thing. Because we need, because once people start to see, get their eyes fixed on what God had done, it will change their perspective. Because remember, God had a technological conversation with Noah. He had to lay all of this out. Because when God, and when God lays it out, he lays things out with perfection. Amen? So now, if your children, if our children are raised in a technological society where all the credit goes to science and not to God, then that opens the door for your socialism and for your communism and all that other stuff. Amen? Because those, those beliefs have to suppress religion because they don't want to answer to God because the government wants to be God. So until we start to look at 
technology and how it's affecting our lives and how it's affecting the lives of our children and our grandchildren and start to take an interest in what they're looking at and how long they're looking at it. Because if your kids can't put down an iPad for an hour and they're staring at it for three and four hours and it's not schoolwork, you're not doing them a favor by letting them stay attached to that. Amen? You guys okay? Because, see, the suppression of man is critical. The suppression of religion is critical to the elevation of man. So if we can get religion, if we can get God out of the equation, it opens up for us to give credit to man. And that's why all these people are being known now. Amen? Some of the most, some of the most well-known people in the world now are tech giants. We know their faces. We know everything about them. Oh, man, they're really rich, man. He's really smart. He, she, or who, whoever it is. But man cannot build his kingdom without God. And so now we talked about this, uh, I don't know if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, about um, our identity and how, and how today's society and culture is trying to steal our identity. As a matter of fact, I ordered, I ordered some in him books that when you start knowing who you are in Christ, we, got to re, we have to get a knowledge of who we are in Christ outside of who we are within ourselves. Then we can also grow in the knowledge of the things of God. Now, the key to identity used to be wrapped up in names. So we all know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, and all those guys, they have to change their names because their names ended in E-L and I-A-H. E-L is, is for Elohim, and I-A-H is for Jehovah. It ended that God is, because God's wrapped up in those guys' names. So in order for them to identify with what's going on, what was going on in Babylon, they had to try to change their names and to change their identity. So that's the reason why it's important that we engage our young people in what they're watching and what they're listening to, what they're seeing. And you need to check yourselves on what you're watching. You need to check yourselves in what you're listening to. We got to make sure that we're starting to put ourselves in a, in a, in a cocoon sort of like to where we got as much God stuff going on around us as possible so we can be real good role models for, so our children can see. It doesn't mean that they're not going to make a mistake, but at least it means that they have a place to go back to in case they find themselves in the middle of, of the struggle. We need to know what our children are plugging into. I never heard of some of these things, Snapchat. Facebook, I got that. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. There's so many different things now. There's so many different social media platforms. And, and everybody in, in our society is starting to get it to the point that when we want to have as many likes, your acceptance is based upon likes. Oh, wow, a lot of people like that. Or, this one really gets me, followers. Followers. Oh, this guy has a million followers. Is that scary or what? Just think, just think about that. Followers. Having, having followers. So, when you ever use creation to define who you are instead of the creator, you're not, you are an idolater. So I remember growing up as a young, as a, as a, as a, as a young kid. It's near, and thank God it's not as big as it used to be back then. That Zodiac nonsense. Remember that? Okay, I'm, I'm a Leo. When you're born, you're a Leo. Oh, you're a Scorpio. Oh, wait a minute. We can't date because I'm a fire sign and you're a water sign. 
people wearing jewelry with their... <laughs> I remember that nonsense. But it's not, as, it's not as popular as it was back when I was growing up, but it was, it was, it was big time back in the 70s and stuff. So a lot of people identified themselves with what their sign was. I'm a Leo. That's why I'm like this. Amen? I'm a Scorpio. I'm a, Sagittari I'm a Sagittarius. Whatever it was, I was like, man, this is just the stupidest thing in the world. You're just a jerk. <laughs> You know what I mean? So these people were rebelling against God, and they used their ability to build this structure to be able to replace God so they can be as God. So as I was looking at this today, I was like, man, I remember there was a time when the Empire State Building was like the tallest building in the world. And then there was the Sears Tower. Now it's been sold. I don't know who owns the Sears Tower now. But in Chicago, that was the tallest building in the world. But I think like the Empire State's probably number 10, and the Sears Tower is probably number 8 or something like that. Chad, let me have a, some of the pictures of the tallest building. Wow. Now, I'm trying to remember. Now, this one, the, the, the tallest one, look at that thing. Tw that, one's, that one is in, where is that at? Is that in? Yes, that's in Dubai. And because there's another one being built right now that will be finished that will be taller than that. And it's, in, and it's in Asia. So what there's, so could you imagine having that much disposable income? <laughs> to build this? That's crazy. It's amazing. And I, think, and I think the stats are saying that of the, the majority, the, of the largest buildings in the world, more than half, I would say nine, about 80 or 90 percent are either in Saudi Arabia or they're in the middle, or, or they're in Asia. Okay? So could you see these guys say, I'm going to build one bigger than that one. I'm going to build one bigger than that one. Why? You get me? You get me? Hey, he thought he was a man. I'll build one taller than that one. And I'm going to build one taller and make it look more glamorous than anything else there. Because these, a lot of these things are being ego-driven. Amen? And when you, and when, because I thought about this, the more you start to, start to idolize yourself, people who idolize themselves love big stuff. Nebuchadnezzar built a big old tall statue of himself. Didn't he? And then he said, oh, no, I'm going to put some gold on that bad boy too. Could you imagine that? A 90 foot tall statue with gold? You, you had to walk by that thing on a, on a, on a, on a bright day and be like, man, whoa. Amen. How ego, how, how you start to look at these things and you start to look at these societies in places that don't worship God, they always have big, tall statues of their gods. But our God said, no graven images. Amen? Hallelujah. So, when we start looking at, you start looking at technology, and we start looking at what man is doing in his own, and he believes his own ability, he's never as big as God. So, the next verse steps up. The next verse is this one. Let me have, um, let's go back to, um, What's that, Genesis 11? Was it verse 5? <laughs> All right. But the Lord, but the Lord came down. 
to look at the city. The Lord came down. At that 2,700 square square foot tall building, the Lord could come down and be like, oh, (laughs) really? What's that? He looks down on it all. He came down to look at the city in the tower the people were building. He came down to look at it. But he also has to set them straight on what he instructed them to do. Remember, God has a plan. And if you're, and this, this also tells you that there's power in your free will to do what you want to do. But there will be times, at critical times, that I, that Rod Parsi would call him back in the day, this is him back in the late 90s, he would say, uh, at strategic inflection points, he'll make sure he fixes things. So he came down and he said, look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, there's nothing they set out to do that will be impossible for them. Remember, mankind is created in the image and the likeness of God. We have amazing creative forces within inside of us. Amen? Because who, who made us? He did. Could you imagine? I sold insurance in the 1990s. The first computer I had was a 286, when it, and it was a little laptop. The battery probably weighed as much as this. <laughs> it took forever and a day to boot up. So then you thought you were real good, and you got up to a 486. I don't even know what 486 and 286 mean. All I know is now it's very slow. We went, folks, we went from dial-up internet to, what do you call it, broadband in less than, what, 20 years? We went from boing, boing, remember that noise you used to make when it was down up? To you turn it on and it's there. Fiber optics, because of the, of, the, of the creative ability that's inside of man. And we came here just in time, right before they brought the cable and internet lines out here. They didn't used to exist. Because the guy said, oh, we got cable out here. We can do this. I'm like, sweet. If not, we've been on some, you know, like some of those small local bills. So every time someone comes out here and they say, uh, and I say, hey, I need some more cameras put up here, and, and we want to do this here and everything else. He says, well, I hope your internet's fast enough. I said, don't worry, son. I told them we want the fastest internet we can have, period. Then they always, then they always don't believe me because they're out in the country, right? And they says, go on, check my speed or something like that. Then he goes, oh, yeah, you got plenty of speed. I said, thank you. Now could you please install what I need? You know? But anyway, let's keep on going. Now, so he said, let's come down and confuse the people with different languages. Whenever you try to do something without God, it leads to confusion. Look at this country trying to be ran without God. Look at it. A bunch of confusion. Look at people's lives that don't have Christ. And, and oftentimes, we can look at them and say, well, you know what? Hey, you know, they're successful. Everything else is done. Don't worry about it. Eventually, you can only go so high until you need Jesus. They can only get so high until they, until they, until they was like, oh, my goodness. Because God's going to, in, God's going to intersect your life and going, going to ask you the question, what are you going to do? Are you going to do it my way or not? And if you don't, then there's a consequence towards this, amen? Because they were supposed to go throughout the world, amen? And when we, and when we start looking at a lot of our young people today, they're trying to come at them with confusion. And the confusion is wrapped around, is not wrapped around Christ. It's wrapped around a whole bunch of science. Oh, well, you know, you can pick what gender you are. 
I just remember growing up, I'm like, okay, man, which bathroom is it? There's the boys' bathroom, there's girls' bathroom. This, this thing's not rocket science. There's not a bathroom that says something else. But they believe, though, if you keep on coming at people with the science of it, Amen? If you keep on telling them, explaining it to them through the science of it, through the technological aspect of it, you'll get them to believe it, and then next thing you know, you can change it. But whenever you try to change your gender without God, this whole, the whole system is going to fall. It's going to crumble. Amen? Now, we'll keep going. I'm making good time, too. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> we, because of technology, we should be thanking God in this country. We should be thanking God. But I get the feeling... that in this country, we're biting the hand that's been feeding us for a long time. And if you ever had a dog and you, and, you, and, you, and you was feeding the dog and then one time you wanted to put a little something extra in the dog dish and while you were reaching down there to put something extra in the dog dish and the dog started going, Rrr. you look back, you'd be like, what? Who bought you that food? Who put the food in the dish there? Ruffy? And I'm trying to add to what you have in there, and you still, and you want to bite my hand, and you're growling at me? Amen? I'm not talking about correction of animals. Did everybody get there? People really get bad, bad about that, but you know. I'm not Mike, Mike Vick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good part. But what I'm saying is, don't you think that when God has blessed this country, this country has come from nowhere where it started to where it is. And it's, and it's growling at God. It's growling at God. God said, you guys have you guys been blessed. We had the luxury of World War II not being fought on our soil. Hmm? And World War I, you name all of them. Not being fought on our soil. And we got people right now that's growling at the creator of the universe, saying that, well, with all the bad stuff going in the world, going on in the world, how can there be a God? Free will. Your free will. Just like these people here. They were building something, and they know they were being disobedient to God. God told them to, to spread out. They were like, hey, go back to verse 4. Go back to verse 4. Come, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches to the sky. This will make us famous. Remember, everybody, again, you want your Twitter followers? Oh, man, I got 1,000 followers. I got 2,000 Facebook friends. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I got 200 likes on a picture of me. And preachers are getting sucked into this. Because you, if you run in numbers, wait a minute here. Wow, that last sermon you did that said everybody gets saved, and everybody goes to heaven, man, that had 2,000 views. Man, you got to keep on preaching more of them like that. Mm -hmm. 
the, no, the, the, the ones you're talking about, everybody gets blessed with no consequence, that's a really popper. Hey, don't talk about that repentance thing. And whenever you do online, don't shake it. Or they won't listen to you. Okay, I want to get those views. I want to get those likes. I want you to like me. Wait a minute. I thought you were supposed to be leading them to Jesus. And Jesus said, if they didn't like me, they might not like you. <laughs> Amen? So this whole thing is all messed up. All behind technology. All behind this. Ministries are gauging their success based on the feedback from this. So when the minister gets to heaven, he'll say, hey, Noah, how many, people got in the, how many people got in the ship with you? Oh, shoot, man. You didn't do too good at all because this guy got 2 million likes on Facebook. <laughs> to, 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 the little, to the small guy out in, the, out in the village somewhere out in the jungle who, who's, been, who's had a church of six people for 30 years. And, and all of them saved, and everybody else that came there, he tried to preach the gospel. They'll say, well, due to the fact that, man, your Internet footprint was not strong enough, you're not going to get the reward. Hey, but that's all right. Mr. Lukewarm over there? Hmm. Oh, because you had 3 million likes, and you got all these followers, you get this reward. Exactly. We got to understand this thing, man. Don't get trapped into this nonsense. If we start basing our success based upon what comes out of this, you get you find yourself lost. All right. Now, I'm closing with this. Because when we start preaching the gospel the way the gospel should be preached with a passion. We'll turn this whole thing around because the power of God is going to fall and it's going to flow through us. But we have to understand that when God gives us a directive, he expects it to be done. God told them what to do and they did not do it and they wanted to be blessed their own way. It doesn't work. You can look at the Old Testament over and over and over again. You'll see how I mean, every time we try to do things our own way and for our own purposes, they fail. But we need to make the decision today that I'm gonna do what the Lord, I'm gonna do what the Lord tells me to do. Amen? So now. And I start thinking about this. <laughs> and this is a powerful tool. Because if you lost it, what does it do to you? Your bank accounts wrapped up in this. Your investment accounts are wrapped up into this. Come on, everything, your, your personal information, your family information, everything is wrapped. There's too many things that's wrapped up into this. And that's the reason why if it's lost, you're not like, hey, where's my cell phone? You're like, where's my cell phone? Where's it at? It's because we can't go a day without it. And when we start thinking about what's tied up to this, it keeps on attracting you all the time. I've got two investment apps, and I like to look at them all the time. I'm like, no. No. I'm telling myself now, no. No. See, can I just be transparent here? See, because the only way I can get this point across to you, I want you to know that when you're, when, when, when you're studying the Word of God or you look at that stuff and all of a sudden you, you just take a glimpse at your phone, you look over, and next thing you know, you would be like, I wonder what this is doing. And it's instantaneous. How many times is it pulling you away? Then you've got to ask yourself, what's more important? Who's my provider? God is. 
then why am I so Amen? You put everything in its right place. I'm not telling you not to look at it. I'm not telling you not to touch it. But when this, when this becomes a priority, that technology becomes a priority over God in your life, you really need to start looking at it and start saying, wow, could I really get off of Facebook for three days and not be like, you? Be like the guy on the cell phone commercial. <laughs> Could I really do it? Could I really get off of social media for three days? Could social media survive without me on it for three days? Could an Alabama Crimson Tide Google search go without me for a week? I think it could. I think, I, I think, me not, me not thinking about spring football will be all right. Huh? I think it'll be all right for a week. Or whatever, whatever your interest is that's not of God. We got to really start looking at this and start saying, you know what? Because God, you have something for me this year. And I'm going to get so close to you that you, that you can whisper in my ear what it is. And I will do whatever you tell me to do. Because I know one thing. Last night, yesterday I was shoveling snow and I got so tired. I went to sleep early. And as I was sleeping, you ever, you ever looked at a, uh, you ever had an inflatable mattress? So what happened to me? I started praying the Holy Ghost. And as I was praying, it felt just like Air came into my body like an inflatable mattress, <sighs> blew me up. And then he and she told me, he said, lay hands on your wife. And I, I said, I, I said, take my hand. And whatever he blew into me, as I grabbed her hand, <sighs> it blew out. These are the things that are going to start happening systemically in this church. He also told me this, and I felt really good and refreshed about this. Hallelujah. Now I get to start teaching on faith. Because sometimes, oh, I just, I just, feel, I just felt like a, whew, if I had it. You know, you ever put your hand on that Einstein bar, at, uh, ball at, that electrical ball, that co-side, all of a sudden your hair just pull up? If I had hair, I'd had a big afro. Because now it's time for us to understand. Remember, this year we started out. You're going to find out where your place is, and you're going to find the grace, okay? But in order for you to become who God wants you to become, you're going to have to take a step out in faith to go get it. Boy, I'm excited. I am excited. It's time. Who glory. It is time. And when, and the, re mm, shikusha. the reason why, if we have to teach on faith, because it's going to be so big for some of you that you're going to have to take, you have to, by faith, you're going to have to grab a hold of the vision. Because it's not going to be natural you. Ooh, boy, I just feel a, ha, woo, ha, ah. It's not going to be natural you that's going to do this. It's going to be by the Spirit of God and by His grace that He's going to do some things to some people in this congregation if they're willing to believe it and to receive it that's going to really blow your minds. Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you that I am unleashed to do this now. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for every, everybody that heard this message, Lord. We know that we have to put you first and that we're not ran by social media. We're not ran by the things that are not of you. We're going to make sure that you are our number one priority in our lives, Father God. And we thank you that no one takes your place in our lives. And we are making room. We're making a habitation in you, Lord Jesus. And, Father, we thank you that we'll hear your voice and we'll take heed to your instruction. And we thank you for that right now. 
in Jesus' name. May God bless you and keep you in all you do. We'll see you on Sunday. Get out of here.